Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful day. Lord, we thank you for this gift of life, every providence that you have made for us. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. You are our helper. You make everything possible for us. You provide us the right resources. Every good thing is a perfect gift from above. Holy Spirit, take complete authority of this entire session. Take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords. You think through my mind. You speak through my mouth. Let every word that is spoken in today's class be only to glorify the name of Jesus and nothing of us. And I take authority over every demonic spirit of distraction, disturbance, and unbelief that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. In the name of Jesus, I command you leave this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for I know and I know that you are going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs, wonders, and testimonies. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, before we begin, Sister Karen wants to share her testimony. So, go ahead, Sister. Yes, Sister. So, in one of the previous meetings, you had shared a testimony regarding how you wanted to eat Shavarma Monday. And, uh, you, uh, and, and your wish was fulfilled. So, it was something very small. So I, I recall that yesterday and I, I was thinking what to cook for uh, today. So I I thought I will, since the Holy Spirit uh, is interested even in the little details of my life, I thought I will pray in tongues and I will ask the Holy Spirit what what I sh what meal I should cook for today. And uh, so I prayed in tongues. And I, and then I decided, we, I, I mean, um, so while I was praying in tongues, then it... Uh, then I mean, then I decided that I should be making this mango cucumber curry and beetroot fry. So accordingly, I uh, we made a online order for these vegetables that were to reach today morning. So, uh, so in the morning, my husband told that I don't know why, but uh, it didn't reach yesterday. So I'm, uh, I'm contacting the support, and then he said that uh, they are saying they cannot deliver the order. They'll deliver it after three days. So I'm going to cancel the order now. So I was actually disappointed and I was thinking, so maybe, I mean, I, I still need to grow spiritually a little more and then uh, the Holy Spirit, I mean, whatever, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is actually going to speak to me or <laughs> things are going to work out in these little things. So then I thought, then I bought, we bought some other vegetables to cook for the day and I was actually going to prepare it. So just then, uh, my husband said, I'm receiving a, the call from the Amazon delivery executive. And he says, they said they've canceled the order because they'll be, deliver it on, they'll be able to deliver it only after three days. And now they have uh, delivered the order now. <laughs> so so just then, and, and the order that we had made for the uh, yesterday, I received it. And I made exactly the same thing that I had paid in tongues and I'd, we, we had decided to make. So, so this this was like a confirmation for me that yes, the Holy Spirit is not just not just wants to help us in the major major things that we experience in life, but also in the everyday or the little everyday tasks that you know we 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 take up. Praise God! Beautiful testimony, sister. Even I have two small testimonies to share based on what happened yesterday. So, as you all know that uh, I'm come to pursue my master's. And the thing was, even though I had got an admission, we had not, uh, you know, made any arrangements for the accommodation, the place where I'm going to stay. We had looked around for places and there was this one particular place we liked, which was in the campus itself. And, uh, you know, like we wanted that place. So at that point, when we had inquired, they said the availability is not there right now. You know, we will let you know. So yesterday when we came, okay, we were like, okay, we are going to go and talk to them. 
so i come to my college okay and i see it's empty okay there's nobody there and we just inquire with the security and they tell us that because you know it's a festival occasion so in india you know whenever there's a festival occasion uh, most of the public offices colleges and all are closed so it was closed okay and now we feel like okay we came all the way you know from our place where we were staying the place which we had taken for a day to this place believing that okay there's an accommodation but to do all those formalities there's nobody there now what do we do you know when you come there with expectations and you don't see anything happen what comes to your mind you be like okay i simply came here correct yes yes sister what happens when you don't see things the way you wanted to see but the best part was neither me neither my mother neither of us were in that worry we were not in that anxiety or anything we said it's okay uh, if it's not going to happen today it will definitely happen tomorrow so we will just take a round about okay and we just went around to that hostel where i wanted to you know have an accommodation and praise god we saw the in charge of that um, hostel she's a nun so she was over there and uh, we just inquired with her we told her that you know i'll be pursuing my course over here and uh, you know I, we were looking for a place to stay so she said it's okay you can come today itself and tomorrow you can do you know uh, the formalities so praise god even though in the physical it looked like you know foolishness to come on a day where uh, you know everything is closed of course we did not know that it was closed but when we went there god's favor was there where you know he put that none in our life as a favor to allow us to accommodate yesterday itself so that was one testimony okay another testimony was uh, we were going to visit somebody yesterday okay in bangalore and uh, so that person's address was a particular place okay so we get into the bus both me and my mother we get into the bus and we are like uh, we want to go to this particular place now obviously we are in a new place we are in a new environment and all of those things we should be alert but both of us we were just sitting and we were you know like praying in tongues and we were going about then after some time the conductor is like you know your stop has already gone okay what are you all both sitting here and doing and we both are laughing we are like it's okay now wherever we can get down we'll get down okay so we got down and obviously we were not upset that we missed the place okay so the place where we got down since we had come to this place the last time we were familiar so we just asked a person who was over there and that person said the destination where you want to go is on the left so praise god the place where you know we stopped also was the place where we actually had to go so we had not missed out on anything so what i'm trying to say is there might be so many things in the physical which will show that whatever you're believing and whatever you desire is opposite to what you're seeing but i have to remember that god is in control of every situation understanding this let's go to 2 corinthians chapter 14 verse 17 and 18 thank you jesus yes can someone please read this sister priya can you enlarge it a little it's too small okay. to see okay i'll try to enlarge it yeah please uh, sister it, yeah yeah one second is it better now can you see yes sister thank you sister 
Okay, can someone please read this? Yeah. But while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Praise God. So this scripture is saying, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Now, I have a question for you, okay? With your natural eyes, how can you not see things which are around you? Is that what the scripture is saying? No. Then what do you think it is saying? It's saying about the spiritual. Yes. Things in that you can see that is in the spiritual, right? Yes. In other words, okay, if you see the scripture in another translation, this scripture is speaking about focus. Okay. You might see a lot of things in your circumstances. You might see a lot of things around you which may not be in accordance to what you're believing. But the question comes, where is your focus? Is your focus on the things which you're seeing or is your focus on the things which are not seen? As long as your focus is on the things that is seen, you are still in the physical realm. Even though you are empowered to live a supernatural life, the life that you're living is very natural, very carnal. Many a times what we see, we can get consumed. All of us get consumed with that. But at that moment, when you're seeing all those things, when you make a decision to focus on the word of God, that is eternal, you start seeing the goodness of God. Now, in whatever testimonies we heard, okay, like in the natural, does it make sense for a person to go on a day where everything is closed? No. No, obviously not, correct? But sometimes what I have realized is God will take you into a journey where he'll make you go into places at odd timings, at specific, you know, at certain times, which it might not seem logical, okay? But when you start seeing things through the lens of the word of God, trusting on the Holy Spirit, he will lead you. He will lead you perfectly. You don't have to worry about what is coming around you. You don't have to worry about anything that's around you. Your circumstances don't decide, you know, what is the end result. It is your response to that circumstance that decides the end result. One of the reasons why we were at rest was because we were praying in tongues. And it was not like, you know, we were actually struggling to pray. Nowadays, praying in tongues comes very conscious, like, you know, unconsciously. Like when I'm uh, not doing anything, I'm just like started to pray in tongues. As you build a habit on it, you start realizing that it has become a part of your life. Would anyone like to add something on this? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, sister. You know, yes. this, um, the scripture, I think he also speaks about um, meditation and our imagination. Because, yes. you know, sometimes what we're seeing in the physical might be um, opposite of what uh, we want to see. But while we're in speaking in terms of praying, we, become, we, use of, we can make use of what God has already given to us, which is our imagination, and begin to imagine the positive. Uh, maybe we can imagine like our uh, healing situation be healed, even though that's not we see in the physical. We can imagine people coming to favor us, even though that might not be. Um, or like, for instance, in your case, 
maybe you can imagine um, those people coming to help, even though they didn't help in that instant. So we can begin to imagine things working for our good. Because, you know, um, this scripture, when I saw it, it also reminds me of um, the scripture Jesus said that, you see, he says that um, eyes has not seen, he hasn't come to the heart of man, or ears have not heard what I would do for those that love me. Um, so thank you, sister. Praise God. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, in other words, what the sister was giving us a very powerful wisdom key. She's talking about imagination. Now, my imagination can be on the things that I see. For example, when we came, now I can take my testimony only as an example to study on this topic. When we came there and we heard words, what happened? We approached the security guard and he spoke words. What he said? He said that today because of a festival, the office is closed. Okay. Now, based on that, what imagination came to me? Imagination came to us that, okay, so that means today our work won't be done. Correct? So you can get an imagination based on the physical things that you see or you can make an imagination based on the things that are unseen. When we make an imagination, we allow the seen to form an imagination of the things based on the things seen, then we are going to get what we expect. And that is why expectations is the breeding ground for miracles. If you want to take this down, you can take this down. I'll repeat it again. Expectations is the breeding ground for miracles. Expectations is the breeding ground for miracles. Now, whatever you want in your life, okay, you have to have an expectation. It's not about just confessing the scripture, telling the scripture 30 times, 50 times. It's not like that. Whenever you want anything, you want to receive anything from the kingdom of God, you have to have an expectation. You have to have an imagination of, you know, the imagination of receiving the things in the unseen. Maybe in the seen, it seems like, okay, you have not yet received it. But in the unseen, if you can imagine yourself receiving that thing, it's a very powerful you know, it's a very powerful tool that God has given us. Imagination. Whatever things you see right now, it is because of the imagination that you made even before you saw it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So every day, you have to have an expectation. Expectation of how you want things to go. In the physical, it might not turn out to be the way you want it to be, but the end result is going to be what you imagined, okay? Because we have an enemy called Satan who is coming with distractions, and those distractions in the scene is only a strategy of the devil to shift our focus from the unseen to the seen, as long as we are focused on the word, on the unseen, on the imagination, which is according to the written word of God, we are victors. We have victory in Christ. But the moment I shift my focus from the unseen to the seen, I have lost the battle. Now it is very easy to get tormented. It is very easy to get offended. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone would like to add something on this? Um, sister, there's yes, one more testimony. Yes, so there was one more testimony I wanted to share. So my uh, son ha has fish allergy. So initially he was able to eat fish when he was small, around a year. But then in some time after he started, when he eats fish, he started getting nausea and he would, uh, he, he, he would vomit sometimes. 
so uh, so we were not giving him fish but uh, last sunday i thought uh, i sh i should uh, you know now jesus has finished everything on the cross for me so this allergy also should not be there my son should not be suffering from it so i uh, so i decided i will i will pray i will uh, claim claim the healing of jesus and i will give him fish so that's what i did and i kept repeating uh, uh, he is free from this allergy by the wounds and stripes of jesus and then i i i gave him the fish so uh, he had it and like he used to have before he did not have any nausea or he did not complain of anything he was fine and uh, so that afternoon he had it for lunch he was fine so uh, we were we were very happy but then in the evening he started complaining of stomach pain so usually this would not ha happen he would usually have a little nausea as soon as he ate and then in some time he would be all right but this time in the evening many hours after he had the fish he started feeling uneasy so so i got a little scared um you know uh, like you know why is this happening now when he was all right in the afternoon so so then what i did was i decided i will pray in tongues and i told the holy spirit now i'm out of there are very few scriptures i know and i'm out of i mean i do not have anything else to say now so i uh, i prayed in tongues and i asked the holy spirit to guide me. so that is when uh, when i was praying in tongues i got a message that i should be giving him something that he likes a lot likes to eat a lot and he was uh, he's very fond of ketchup so i asked him will you have some ketchup now so immediately he said yes and he had that ketchup and uh, soon after he had four slices of bread and after that there was you know it he was totally all right that day yeah yes god so, yeah awesome testimony sister because i can understand as a mother you know mothers they want their children they are so protective of their children right and it's not easy to give your child something where you have had a past history of allergy right but you took a step in faith you chose to believe the unseen which says that jesus has finished it on the cross and you gave him the fish okay and yes the evil one came with one kind of a distraction to say that you know to put doubt in your mind to put fear in your mind to say because you gave your son fish that is why his stomach is paining and yeah. it can shift your focus it can get you into fear but jesus always says do not fear wherever you see right this word do not fear is a very common phrase in the bible why does he say do not fear he says do not fear because the moment you get into fear okay your mind stops working you cannot hear the voice of the holy spirit every time okay every time you are in a battle and you want to hear the voice of god you have to operate in faith you have to be focused on the unseen not the seen and if you see there are so many examples in the bible one example is okay where peter and the other disciples were on the boat okay and jesus was walking on the water and jesus tells peter come the moment jesus peter hears his voice come by jesus he takes a step okay out into the water now i want to ask you has any of you ever walked on water till today no sister no so walking on water is it a easy thing it is not but because peter was focused on what jesus told him that is why he made a step to walk on water and he started walking on water but the moment the storm came his focus shifted okay and when his focus shifted from jesus to the storm what happened he started sinking and many a times in our life too we experience that when the word of god you know instructs us or commands us 
to do something we need faith to do that we have to walk in faith and we start well in our journey okay but when the storm comes what happens to our focus what happens to our faith we shake we shake we waver <laughs> we look at the situation we look at the situation rather than then, we look at christ yeah our focus shifts from the christ onto the situation and now once upon a time where we were so confident on christ now we are caught up with that situation and day and night we are thinking about that situation and our faith is wavering correct and that's why every time okay we go through this we have to ask ourselves where is my focus is my focus on the seen or the unseen if i'm tormented if i'm irritated it is because my focus is on what is happening around me my focus is not on the word praise god i'll just put that scripture okay which speaks about that peter walking on water yeah i'll just put it it is in matthew chapter 8 verse 26 can someone just tell me which part is it peter and jesus matthew chapter 14 was 31 thank you jesus i'll just put that scripture if anybody wants to add on whatever we are learning you can add okay thank you jesus praise god <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Can someone please read this? And he came so he came so he said come and when Peter had come down out of the boat he walked on the water to go to Jesus. but when he saw that the wind was was serious yeah he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried out saying lord save me and immediately jesus stretched out his hands and caught him and said to him o oh, you of little faith why did you doubt and when they got into the boat the wind ceased praise god if you see the scripture okay when peter had come down out of the boat he walked on the water to go to jesus so his focus was completely on what jesus said okay but as he was walking when he saw that the wind was boisterous so now when peter was seeing you know he was walking on water is it not that he could not see the water in the natural he could uh, see the water he could see the water he could But, see the water okay yes. but his focus was not on i have to walk on water his focus was jesus told me come so i am coming and that is why he took the first step because i was thinking when i read this okay it's not that peter would have wanted to walk on water right if he wanted he would have remained in the boat he would have not even taken a step in faith what made him take a step in faith in the first place the first thing was his focus was not on what was happening around him his focus was on jesus told me come so i'm going to come and he took that first step so his focus was on the unseen unseen as in jesus spoke words come so his focus was on that word that jesus spoke his focus was not on what he was seeing 
But as he started walking, when he saw that the wind was boisterous, now his focus shifted from the scene unseen to the scene where the wind was blowing. The wind was getting very violent. Now that started distracting him. Now he could no longer focus on what Jesus told him. Now he focused on what his situation was telling him. The wind was speaking. And because of all that he saw and his focus was on the scene, fear entered him. That faith, that confidence, what he had in the beginning left and fear entered. And when he was afraid, what happened? Now he was blank. Now he doesn't know what to do. It's like, okay, this wind is there and everything. And even though he's a fisherman, you think he would not have known how to swim? No, he must have known. He knew how to swim. He's a fisherman. And fishermen, they face all kinds of storms. He would have known to swim. He knows to swim. But in that situation of panic and fear, even what he naturally knows, the natural things he would have done in that situation, he, he could not do it. And he began to sink. And he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Many a times that happens, right? When we panic, whatever we can normally do also, we don't do it. Have you all experienced that? Yes. In a situation where you don't know what to do because fear has frozen your mind. And that's exactly what happened to him. And now he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Because he was desperate. And in pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Jesus helped him. Okay. And he said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Does that mean that Peter had little faith? No, he had faith, but the faith was not strong. Okay. Walking on water required faith. Okay. It's not small faith. It is big faith. But when Jesus is speaking about little faith, he is actually speaking about the duration. He's saying, Peter, you started with faith. Now, what happened to that faith? Where is your faith? Why did you get so scared? Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt me? Why did you doubt my word? That's exactly what happens to us. In situations around us seem like, you know, everything is coming and attacking you. What happens to us? We feel like, God, aren't you listening to us? Aren't you there? Don't you care? This is happening. That is happening. Right? And that time, Jesus must be laughing and saying, Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt me? If I've given you my instruction in the word, and if you're following it, no matter what may come, the end result is going to be what is written in the word only, right? As long as you choose to believe and follow it. Why do you doubt me? Why do you get angry? Why do you get anxious? Why do you react? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> so this is what I wanted to share. Can somebody, I mean, would anybody want to add something more on this or ask anything? Yes, sister. So I was listening to a uh, teaching by sister Jocelyn where, where she said that people sometimes, they experience a miracle during the retreats. They experience a major healing, like a tumor disappearing or some, some healing. But after some time, uh, after a few days or some time, when she meets them, they say sometimes say that yeah we it 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 we were healed at that time, but now it has come back. So I think it is it is because like you said we uh we tend to lose our focus we uh, we get busy in the world and we shift our focus from God to the world and that is when the enemy attacks us again. Yes, so that is where I need to understand. Okay, 
what is my relationship the foundation of my relationship with jesus is it that when only things are going my way or things are going good that is when i am focused on him or is it even when the trials come the storms come in our life am i still going to be focused on him just because you got healed okay just because you got your miracle you got your testimony that doesn't guarantee that your life is going to change my i would say you know when i got healed of depression that was not the turning point the turning point was the day i gave my testimony because that was the day where you know papa told me about something you know i myself did not know he told me you have a potential in you god has put a potential in you to go and you know minister to somebody to go and comfort somebody not with your own strength but with the strength that i you know jesus has put in you god has put in you you have received that comfort now it is time for you to go and share it and even when you're sharing it the comfort okay you might say how do i do it you don't have to know everything just trust the holy spirit like yesterday we just depended on the holy spirit and we were at rest like we were not you know upset about anything that was happening you know or anything because normally if we were not in the word we were not focusing on the word of god not meditating on the goodness of god then many things around us would speak to us because like i have seen my life before this okay there would be so many questions so many things and one of the things that kills faith is our unbelief you know our our desire to question to know things see when god called people he never called them giving them the details he told them i have a plan for you but he did not tell them the plan in one go he told them one step at a time so what i have realized in these 3 years of my relationship with god is if god is taking me on a journey i don't need to know the details i just need to focus on focus on what god is calling me to do through his word and god speaks to all of us through his word right thank you jesus praise god anyone else would like to add oh, something yes sister uh, just to add to what you you just said sister you know um in um in genesis 13 verse 14 uh jesus told abraham the same thing like you know it's very difficult but i think we sh- should all have faith and and uh god was speaking to abraham he says he told him as far as your eyes can see you know wherever your soul of your feet tread upon i'm giving you that land but i can imagine in that time maybe as far as abraham's eyes could see was just dust was land empty land and he, probably he might be imagining what is this man talking about like do you mean this empty space is a mine like you see but um god had uh, instructed him to see as far as his eyes can see is giving it to him and in our natural human state you know what we see might not be what god sees he says his thoughts are not uh, our thoughts they are far they are higher than our thoughts in our own thoughts we are like oh my god this is so impossible i'm not seeing what god is seeing but um like you said just looking at jesus um i begin, i believe we can begin to look the way he looks um and see what he sees concerning our lives thank you praise god beautiful sister and that is why any time we make an imagination any time we have an expectation that expectation should not be based on our fine natural senses that expectation should not be based on our natural abilities my performance but rather that expectation should be based on the written word of god that's where you know that it will be done it has to come to pass because it's a godly vision it's a vision based on the written word of god praise god thank you jesus so i think it was a beautiful class and this revelation okay of that 2 corinthians 4 verse 18 of seeing at the unseen and not the seen connecting it to jesus and peter i got this revelation right now in this class and that's the holy spirit only you know 
giving such beautiful revelations how peter was focusing on the unseen first then his focus shifted to the seen and many a times we to you know become like that but every time even though our focus shifts we have to get it back to the word by renewing our mind praise god thank you jesus okay if there is nothing more to add then we can close for today and continue the next time whenever i can keep a bible study yes sister jonita you want to say something no no i i uh, wanted to say the thanksgiving prayer you know yes, i was i'm on my way out so i was listening to it and, and that was really speaking to me thank you jesus yeah yes what yes sister go ahead make the thanksgiving prayer thank you one second somebody wants to speak romain all right all right yes um yes good morning everyone so actually i have a question okay so okay. Um, sometimes the doubts that come up are like when you are actually questioning have you understood god's instruction correctly and are you uh, like so say like um whatever the thing is and like you suddenly find yourself in a situation or whatever and then you begin to wonder is this have i am i actually for, uh, is the instruction i'm following actually from god am i having the faith in the right thing yes so now see you can say oh that's written in the bible and this is what it is now that is very easy to say but then i have heard thousands of interpretations of the same verse and all of them are pretty different how do i know which one i am to believe who is guiding me correctly which of them are speaking what god wants to tell me how do i know that okay and okay thank you the correct version of the instruction you asked a very valid question romain and this is going to benefit everyone okay so you might listen to many people okay you might listen to many preachers but you have to remember that it is not the preacher who is convincing you but it is the holy spirit who is your teacher right now as i'm speaking this word i am sharing the word okay but it is the holy spirit who's convicting your heart who's speaking to you you know who's giving you the the revelations of it now for example sister jonita just now said okay she was out and whatever we are discussing it is speaking to her okay now do i know what problem she is going through before the class no i do no. not know do i know in this class there are 24 of you do i know what is going on in each of your minds no, no. i don't know but does the holy spirit know he does he does but then the problem arises when let's say okay let's say i have the holy spirit has with me throughout every the whole time that i've been asking a question or like seeking a certain answer and i hmm. have happened to not even without seeking i have met i have crossed paths with say four different people of god who receive messages like that who have word of knowledge who have whatever and all of them claim to be speaking on behalf of the holy spirit to me and on behalf of god to me and all of them give me very divergently different answers whose question whose whose instructions am i to follow who do i believe is speaking for god and who do i believe is giving what god wants me to do okay okay so whenever anybody gives you any prophecy okay or any kind of message the first thing you have to ask is this aligning with the word of god okay that's the first thing is it in accordance with the written word because when the holy spirit oh, all speaks, of them are okay now even if it is showing it's a from a bible verse what is the context of it is the second thing for example okay always remember this three things first thing whenever anybody quotes a bible verse okay which covenant it is old covenant or new covenant because if you are in the new covenant and somebody is telling you something from the old testament telling you that you have to keep this law otherwise there's going to be a curse on you 
it's from the bible correct but does it apply to you today no because today we come under the blood of jesus the blood of jesus has paid the price for us so we are not under the old covenant that is the first thing you can study the old covenant i'm not telling don't study the old covenant but you have to have an understanding if you just study the old covenant without comparing it without understanding what the new covenant is what jesus did you will get deceived you will go into another bondage okay first thing is we come under a new covenant which covenant matters the second thing is the context okay what is the context in the sound when can you repeat yes yes i will i will say tell you whenever any person tells you anything speaks the word of god okay what which covenant it is in is it in the old covenant or the new covenant the new covenant begins the the day jesus died on the cross the moment he died on the cross that is the start of the new covenant till that time everything is the old covenant the old covenant says if you keep the law you will be blessed and if you fail to keep the law you will be cursed correct now somebody some preacher might tell you if you don't keep the law if you don't do this then there will come a curse on you and you can believe it and that person will show you from the bible but without understanding which covenant it is in can you go into fear yes 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 so you understood first thing is the covenant matters okay you have to understand that old covenant doesn't apply to me because i am under the new covenant i have to understand the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant under the new covenant it is about what jesus did for me and believing in him the old covenant demanded performance the new covenant speaks about the grace what jesus has done and i have to receive it by my faith in him and his works second thing if somebody takes a scripture and just tells it to you okay you have to ask what is the context of that okay now there are certain scriptures in the bible which look contradicting but it is not actually contradicting because the word of god does not contradict itself and the to understand the context of what is said you need to read the whole chapter you need to see the scriptures before the scriptures after if somebody is going to tell you some scripture just like that okay out of context you can get deceived i'll share my testimony for the benefit of everyone okay so somebody told me okay showed me in the bible itself that women are not supposed to preach i was sharing the word and somebody showed me the word of god and gave me two scriptures one in timothy and one in corinthians saying that women should keep their mouth shut okay and i went into a bondage because of that now that person spoke the word okay but th- was it really the right understanding of the word no no not at all later on when i asked you know people who are rooted in the word of god this answer they said no the reason the context of that particular verse was saying that in the church the women were talking a lot they were making a lot of noise and that is why saint paul gave an instruction to keep quiet so that everyone can hear the word but some person you know like the devil used people to give that wrong understanding so that i stop preaching the word now can that was i deceived yes i was deceived but as i started going deeper in the word and understanding taking guidance from the right people did that help me i realized it i realized in this area i fell oh, so that I'm is sorry one. i missed out okay sister this part is recorded okay you can read that and you can go back to what uh, i'm saying is that okay sister yonita for you thank you jesus yeah romain are you with me yes yes so your understanding 
so whoever it may be even if that person is a preacher man of god you have to ask these three things and the last thing is to know whether this person is speaking the right thing you will not be confused god is not a god of confusion he brings peace so when the gospel is preached is it lifting your burden or is it giving you peace that you need to understand and the more you study the word the holy spirit will help you to discern that so are you satisfied with this answer um actually so say if like you've gone to like two three different people at two three different retreats for example who have word of knowledge or something and they pray over you you've not mentioned a word about whatever the thing is that's bothering you and you just tell them like pray over me and like tell me what god has to say and all of them will quote different scriptures and say like something very different now i don't know if like they've just out like i don't know if they've given me like scripture just from the top of their mind or they've actually prayed and god has revealed but like all of them give something different and i'm getting a confused instruction at the end of the day so god okay. you want this you want this you want this who's talking okay. for you now and all the scriptures um check the points that you've told me but there's still a problem because i don't know which way i'm supposed to go now all okay. the things make sense all the all the perspectives make equally good sense but are they seem to be asking me different things and i'm confused praise god okay okay it's not like and it's not like wow i'm going to sit and say holy spirit help me to discern i've been trying that for so long and like oh i will feel it in my heart that so and so interpretation is the correct one for me and wow praise the lord i've gone ahead and oh that has not happened and I'm okay and okay okay romain you want to know the truth no i will show you what is written in the bible okay okay yes can you see my screen oh uh, there's no no it's blank now now you should be able to see it um no i okay yes got it okay i want to to read what is highlighted which scripture is this sister john chapter 8 verse 31 and 32 Yes. Yes, Romain. Go ahead. The the truth shall make you free. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, "If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free." Does it say the preacher's message will make you free? No. 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 What it says, the truth shall make you free. but when you will know the truth if you abide in my word word and that so are you understanding romain so how will you know so first thing is you don't have to go behind people to pray over you you have the holy spirit in you but you right now need the teachings from the word of god so is romain with me i think is she there yes 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 i just muted yeah okay okay thank you jesus so you have to study the word every day okay so in this bible study i am not interested in giving anybody word of knowledge what jesus has for you jesus has for this person that person if you come to me i will not tell you all that i am interested in you knowing the truth i'm interested in encouraging you to study the truth that's why this bible study the idea of this is to give you the truth so that this teachings encourages you to have your personal relationship with the holy spirit and as you're studying the word of god now you have the holy spirit who's telling you do this do that if you see my life i don't go around calling preachers and telling them the message you have for me why because i have the holy spirit he is the best counselor for me and But how, how do you how did you hear him like so like now when when you normally like when you read the bible and all at least that's what happens with me it's just stories that i'm reading 
or like say i will come okay. across a familiar verse and like i'll remember an explanation or a like different explanations that different teachers at different places okay. have given and that's okay. it it's not like i can like feel that eureka moment of understanding maybe it will come as i don't know how the how did you how did it happen for you okay like, i'll you tell you that? i will tell you my journey okay first thing is when you are studying any bible study right stick to one thing don't jump into too many teachings okay like right now this particular bible class this particular teaching okay this is going on take this listen to it again make note of the scriptures that is spoken okay and meditate on it start small start slow little by little the holy spirit will you know as you grow in the word you will learn and whatever you are learning in this class ask the holy spirit to give you an opportunity where you can apply so when you apply this word what is going to happen you are going to get a testimony correct you are going to come with a testimony so when you come with a testimony that gives you a confidence that's all i did i heard a teaching when i was in new in the word i was hearing the teachings and i was making notes that notes that scriptures i was applying when i was applying i was seeing result that's how i got convinced that this really works oh, and that's how i grew in the word yes right and how will you know if someone is like giving you an interpretation like say the bible study of following is not meant for you sometimes it can happen that you may end up like following something which ends up like just maybe say making you like you you think it's the right thing and then you go on following and you realize you're just ending up getting more and more burdened instead of helped or like i don't know how do you come to know when something is for you and it's or you're following the wrong one that may be beneficial for others but not for you how do you discern that see discernment comes as you grow more in the word it's not going to happen just immediately that is why like see i know you have lot of questions i i do agree even i had many questions when i was new in the word that is why my advice to you is take one teaching take one suppose if you are coming to my bible study and you are comfortable with this class then don't shift your focus stay focused on this one teaching every day apply it every day study it okay or any person like you can and as you are going more and more in the word the more you fill your heart with the word the holy spirit will help you to discern it's a process it's not going to happen immediately you have to labor for that word to enter you okay praise god thank so, you so so basically you just have to keep trying it's okay even if you end up listening to people that may not be the right ones for you as long as you are making that persistent effort and eventually the holy spirit will slowly start becoming like where you can feel him and hear him clearly for yourself is it yes yes so whatever is there don't go into too many things take one thing which you are convicted and stick to the truth and as you are going deeper and deeper in that truth that truth will help you that truth will set you free okay romain okay got it thank Praise you god. thank you jesus praise god thank you sister priya thank you so much praise god yes sister jonita you can make the thanksgiving prayer okay i'll do it abba father we thank you for this beautiful day lord thank you for bringing us together to hear your word lord even though we have so many things to do lord and our focus deviates at times lord lord i pray that we will focus on you wherever we have to go whatever we have to do that focus will not be shifted lord from you father be with us and give us that discernment that uh, mind that we have set lord earlier to continue in your word lord jesus father i thank you for this time that priya has given to teach your word to us lord this morning and as we move out of this platform lord be with us strengthen us watch over each one of us thank you for each one gathered here this morning lord 
and bless them as they go wherever they go be with them thank you for uh, sister priya and her family bless her and her family and whatever she is doing god is all for your glory for your honor holy spirit strengthen her mind and heart in jesus name i pray amen amen and amen amen amen, amen. thank you sister for this beautiful prayer thank Praise you all god. for joining thank in thank you Thank you, Sister Priya. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye